Hello and welcome to Warhammer Wednesday. This is going to be my review of the Space Marines Primaris Repulsor tank. I'm going to talk a bit about the model, uh, how easy it was to build, things like that. Then I'll do some size comparisons and then I'll talk to you about the rules. One of these models will set you back £50. It's a lot of money, uh, a lot of money for the Primaris Space Marines only transport at the moment. It's the same price as a Storm Raven. It's more expensive than a Land Raider. And at first I wasn't too keen on it. Um, it's not completely finished. There are some gaps and things that I need to uh, finish up. That's why it's not sprayed. Um, but yeah, when I first uh, looked at the images and things, I wasn't hugely keen. I thought there was an awful lot going on on the, on the top turret and on the sides. Um, I mean, obviously we've seen Grav tanks before with Eldar and obviously last year and the year before with, with Custodes. Um, Grav tanks, they're becoming more and more, I say popular, but they're, they're just they're just more of them nowadays. Um, and this is, I think, the most recent anti-grav vehicle uh, for the Space Marines that they've produced. I mean, obviously they have the, the land speeders and things, but that's what used to set Eldar apart from, from Space Marines um, in general, that in the Horus Heresy, they did have jet bikes rather than the, the, the normal bikes and things. And they did have Grav Land Raiders as well. It's, it's written in uh, a couple of the novels. And this really is a big sort of middle finger to the um, Mechanicum. It's a prime example of Rebute Gilliman and Call moving forward with technology. Um, you know, with, before you had land speeders, that's fine. The, the technology worked and, and, and all the rest of it. But with jet bikes, things like that, they sort of lost it. To improve technology and to, to go forward, it was blasphemous, really, um, to the machine god. So this is a big um, step in the direction of progress, uh, one could say. Um, the model itself, uh, it took me longer than I thought um, to build. Um, that's because of these gravitational plates. Um, each one of those is individual. So already you've doubled the number of pieces. And so are all the sister parts on the on the bottom. There are some optional parts that you can leave off if you want. Uh, I think one of the questions on Instagram was, can you not put all of these things on the turret? And yeah, you, you can. You can. You don't have to put all of these things on the turret. Um, you don't have to have these boxes open. You can have them closed. You don't have to have the Space Marine on there. You don't have to have the Onslaught uh, Gatling Cannon. Um, you can leave it blank. Uh, if, if you really wish, but it's part of the weapons and part of the, you know, the auto launches and things like that. Um, I've gone for a full DACA loadout. When I mean full DACA, I mean, I mean, I've gone for frag launchers. Um, I've gone for the Onslaught Gatling cannons. I've gone for the Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, the Heavy Bolters. Uh, I've got the Icarus um, rocket pod there, but I've also got the Storm Bolters. So you could equip it with three uh, storm bolters. And I really like these little turret options because they move and the way you glue them and stuff, they you can position them vertically too. Uh, all three of them. I think that's really cool uh, that you can do that. You can swap them out. So yes, if you did have another one, I mean, yeah, then it's not going to be that difficult to magnetize. I just don't like magnetizing that many of my plastic miniatures. But, but yes, you could magnetize um these and have the the frag launchers in if, if you wished um, but if you have another one with different frag launchers you could swap them out very easily on the fly just just put the frag launchers in uh, again with the front um, you could put you could magnetize the las cannons that's not going to be too difficult to do uh, and that's how it moves in in its uh, housing um, the doors, mm, I suppose you could magnetize them. I've just glued, glued mine shut. Yeah, it's got a, a door there. Is it an assault vehicle? Um, it's a transport vehicle, uh, which is the first thing that sort of surprised me. It's not heavy support. So you could really spam this big time. Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously you have to pay for the power and things, but you know, it's not an assault vehicle because there's no sort of assault ramp. Um, it's got the three en entry points, and then obviously it's got the, the top. 
Now supposedly it carries 10 Primera Space Marines and I'll show you a, uh, a size comparison. Yeah, I'd probably say that they... Okay, well that ain't gonna work. Yeah, height-wise, probably. More on him later. Yeah, I'd probably say in the doorways as well, maybe you could fit 10 in. It's, it's almost feasible. Uh, with the Gravis um, armour being um, counting as, as two models. So, yeah, you can have your five aggressors in this as well, which would be very beasty. So it took me uh, a little bit longer than I thought to build. Um, Time-wise, probably a bit longer than the Land Raider. Uh, Land Raider is quite straightforward. It might just be because I'm used to building Land Raiders, but this seemed to include more parts than a Land Raider. Um, but it might just be me. Yeah, the bottom of the tank hasn't got any detail. Uh, the inside of the tank, it's just got um, some seats. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> We look into that hole. There we go. Just so you can just see, there's there's a couple of seats and some grating for the floor, um, and that's about it. There's no engine. There's no. It's not as detailed as as a Land Raider inside. Um, but then again, I think most people are going to glue the doors. Um, there's going to be a very small amount of people that will have the back door magnetized, and if they do, there's not a huge point because there's no sort of blocking plate there that has a console on. So you're just looking at the inside of a of a model, which is a shame because there's no driver, there's no you know cockpit cockpit area, and again, it just does it questions why they've done the molds for the seats and stuff when um, they're probably not going to be seen by the majority of people. So moving on to the question that I had uh, about these gubbins that are just hanging off uh, the side of the tank, you don't need to glue them on at all. They're all optional. Uh, they glue on the actual pieces, mounting points. There's there's no mounting points. It's just flat on the tank armor. Um, so there's no mounting points on the armor, which is great. So you can have it um, flat. And I might actually do that for the next one that I um, uh, build. Because yeah, there is a lot going on with this, especially once you painted it and things. Um, lots of different uh, detail. Uh, the way this uh, tank goes on its base is, I've never seen GW do this before, but they give you this sort of, I say see-through, there's no really point, there's no, not much point of it being see-through because of all the um, bits and things inside it. Uh, you know, that could have been black uh, for all intents and purposes. Um, the way it mounts is, it goes for a surface area type of point, but then it gives you these tiny little plugs that sort of loosely slot onto there. And I think you just glue this onto the onto the base. But of course, you're not gonna get to that base uh, to paint it. So you're gonna have to either spray the base, paint the base, and then glue it, or just glue it, and then paint the whole base and eventually, when that's finished, glue the bottom of the tank to there, and then it's got a base to sit on. Um, I think it works quite well for a plastic miniature, and it's not too bad. It is a bit odd that there's a little bit of a base um, below it, I have to say. Uh, and when you've got the base... Oh, nearly lost it. And then when you've got the base there, you can just just sort of see it. I mean, you'd have to get real low just to see that. But with that on, yeah, it does give you the, it does give you the uh, image that it is sort of hovering off the ground a little bit. Um, and then we talk about the top turret. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, and I managed to cram as much as I possibly could. There's still purity seals and all kinds of things that I could have added. Um, the main gun, that is either the Laz Talon or the heavy on, uh, the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon and um, they do move up and down and it's quite stiff so you can put it in plenty of um, positions it's fine uh, this doesn't move at all uh, I wanted uh, just a normal space marine firing this um, as he does I've glued him all the way down but there's nothing stopping you from sort of moving his legs a little bit and moving him up a bit so he, he's higher up but yeah that's just the way I've done him and when the turret's on there, um, it's quite tight. Uh, so 
movement is a bit restrictive. Um, I'm sure it'll loosen up after a while, but uh, I'll prefer it uh, tight. And now we're on to the part of the video where I'll do some size comparisons. So I um, bet you're all wondering how big is it compared to a Dread, I mean a Land Raider. <laughs> well, Games Workshop have done a good job in almost making it look bigger than a Land Raider. There's a few tools of the trade that they've, that, that they've uh, enabled. Um, one is they've raised it up. Uh, two is to make a top turret uh, with a potential space marine on. Uh, three is, is the aerials. Um, four is these additional plates at the side. Five is this big sort of engine thing here. There's, there's quite a few things that they've done um, to make it, to give the impression that it is bigger than a Land Raider. And looking there, you'd probably say, yeah, super, it is bigger than a Land Raider, definitely. It's not though, you, you, I mean, it's given the impression that it is, but it's not. It's thinner, uh, it's shorter, and it's not as high. When I mean not as high, I mean, if you take it off its base and stuff, um, and put it flat, the turret, the tip of the turret does, it is, it is higher, the tip of the turret. Um, but the walls of the Land Raider are still higher. Like I say, it's wider because it's got the tracks. Yeah, so the Land Raider is still bigger and cheaper, but for now, but for now you can't carry any uh, Primera Space Marines in your Land Raider. Now with the Repulsor, it doesn't say that you can carry normal Space Marines in at all. It says this model can carry 10 Primera Space Marines, including the uh, Aggressors. So that's your Reavers, your Intercessors, your Hell Blasters, and your Aggressors. So that's four, four different types, plus obviously your, your Captains, your Librarian, your Apothecary, your Chaplain, things like that. You, you know, you can bundle them all in there. You know, but it can't take your Terminators or anything like that. Now, when I first saw the doors for this, I thought, crikey, because the doors for this are smaller than the Land Raider side doors. But yet the Primary Space Marines are so much taller that I did wonder how on earth they get in. Because there's no way they can get in. They'd really have to crouch down pretty low. Um, one could argue that they'd crouch down as low as a, hey, normal Space Marine. <laughs> so it seems to me that this tank is the new Space Marine transport because the Space Marines fit quite nicely in and out of it. Thank you very much. And I know that that's just triggered someone to straight away put uh, in a comments, oh, the vehicles are not for size. Why on earth have they put a Primera Space Marine in the top? You'd, you'd think if it wasn't for size, then they'd make, they'd change the size of that Primaris because he is the same size as, as one of these. Um, but anyway, uh, so another size comparison I can do is with the, yeah, obviously the Primaris who are taller than the, the doors. Um, and then a little mini Marine. And then we've got the new Dreadnought, which yes, it's still my favorite model out of all the Primaris releases. Uh, I don't think the Intercessors will beat that or the Hellblasters. If Forge will make an Overlord, then yeah, maybe. But uh, but yeah, this Dreadnought, absolutely excellent uh, model. And um, yeah, compared to the Repulsor, still holds his own and is still very, very dominating. Let's have a quick comparison to a Sakaran because that's what I sort of thought that this model would be similar sort of size to. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... It's very similar to a Sakaran actually, uh, sort of size-wise. It's about the same width, a little bit, almost the same length, uh, and it's got a top turret too. Uh, doesn't move as freely and nicely, obviously, as the, the Punisher, but still, um, that's what it sort of reminded me of. Now, the downside of this is it doesn't have any sort of big side weapons. All of the weapons at the front and on the turret. 
unlike the Land Raider, which has the lance cannons on the side and heavy bolts at the front, you've got everything at the, at the front here. Um, and you've got some smaller weapons on the sides. You've got the frag launchers or the storm bolters, and you've got the, um, the little Icarus pod. But your main weapon are, are usually these two. Your heavy onslaught Gatling cannon and your heavy bolters, or your last talon and your twin linked uh, last cannon. There, I mean, compared to a Land Raider, your last talon is shorter range of 24 inches, but does get two shots. And then twin last cannon, they get two shots now. And then you've you've got either, I think, an iron hail heavy stubber. So you've still got a lot of DACA, really, um, compared to like a Land Raider and things. So I hope those size comparisons have helped. Okay, so this is the part of the review where I will go into the rules. Uh, taken directly from the 8th edition Space Marine Codex. As I said before, it's a transport option, so it's not heavy support or um, fast attack or anything like that. Uh, its power level is 16, and I will be comparing this to a Land Raider. And when I mean Land Raider, I mean the, the basic Land Raider. Uh, so a Land Raider's power level is bigger, it's 19. Its weapon skill is 6+, plus. Its strength is 8, its toughness is 8, it's got 16 wounds, leadership 9, and a save of 3+. plus. Now that seemed a bit odd for a Land Raider type looking vehicle and Primaris too. Uh, I mean, I know Primaris Marines only get the three plus. That's all of them, including the uh, aggressors, uh, including this, this Gravis armor. Um, and that seems to be the norm, this three plus uh, sort of save. How does that compare to a Land Raider? Well, a Land Raider has got the same number of wounds, same strength, same toughness, same leadership, uh, but Land Raider gets a two plus save. Movement wise, this is odd because it's a flying vehicle, but yet it moves the same speed as a Land Raider. But then again, you'd think, okay, well, it is a tank, so it must be like a slow RAV tank then. But that still means that the Land Raider is pretty, pretty fast for its size. For its remaining wounds, 9 to 16, uh, its movement is 10 inches, ballistic skill 3 plus, 6 attacks, 5 to 8 inches, its movement 5 inches. Ballistic skill 4 plus and attacks d6 and then 1 to 4 it's 3 inches 5 plus ballistic skill and 1 They're exactly the same sort of stats as the Land Raider for when it suffers damage Its standard equipment is equipped with a heavy onslaught Gatling cannon a twin linked heavy bolter an iron hail I always want to say iron halo heavy stubber an Icarus iron hail heavy stubber two crack storm grenade launchers two storm bolters and auto launchers so it's got the Fragstorm Grenade Launcher, which we found on the Dreadnought, uh, which is a range 18 inch uh, weapon, Assault D6, Strength 4, Damage 1. And it also has the same heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon, which is a range 30 inch, heavy 12, Strength 5, AP, minus 1, Damage 1 weapon. But it introduces this new uh, Icarus weapon, usually Icarus, the anti-air weapons, Icarus Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, which is a 36 inch range, heavy 3, Strength 4, AP minus 1, damage 1. And you add 1 to all hit rolls made for this weapon against targets that can fly. But you subtract 1 from the hit rolls made for this weapon against all other targets. So you're getting 3 shots there, um, but they are strength 4. Yeah, it's AP minus 1, but they are strength 4. Uh, and if you want to fire them at infantry or whatever on the ground, then yeah, you, you're going to need the 4+, plus, aren't you? Still 50-50 chance, but it's three shots. Or instead of the Icarus Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, you can give it the Icarus Rocket Pod. Same Rocket Pod as on the Dreadnought, 24 inch, Heavy D3, Strength 7, AP minus 1, Damage 1. Again, same thing. You add rolls against Fly, you subtract for the ones that don't have Fly. Uh, then you get the Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, same as the Icarus, just without the benefit and negative for flying and non-flying. Crackstorm Grenade Launcher. Uh, this is a little bit different than the Fragstorm. Um, it's Assault 1, but it is Strength 6 and minus 1 AP, but it's D3 damage. Then the Last Talon, uh, which is an option for this vehicle, which is on the same as the Stormhawk Interceptor. Uh, that's a 24 inch range, sort of like a heavy Last Cannon, but it's, it's a shorter range. Sort of like a stubby Laz cannon um, with a 24 inch range, heavy 2 shot, strength 9, AP minus 3 and D6 damage. Then the on Onslaught Gatling cannon which mine's equipped with on the pintle mounted there. Um, that's a 24 inch heavy 6, strength 5, AP minus 1 and damage 1. And the Storm Bolter 
of which I could, yeah, I could essentially equip mine with three um, Storm Bolters. That's Rapid Fire 2, Range 24, Strength 4, Damage 1. And then Twin Heavy Bolter, we all know what those are, but because there's two of them and you're not Twin Linked anymore, it's Heavy 6 uh, shots of Strength 5. And then Twin Linked Laz Cannon, we all know what those are, Heavy 2, um, 48 inch range, D6 damage and so on. It's got a lot of options. Um, it can replace its twin heavy bolter with twin last cannon, its heavy onslaught gatling cannon with a last talon, its iron hail heavy stubber with an onslaught gatling ca cannon, its two storm bolters with two frag storm grenade launchers, its Icarus heavy stubber with a Icarus rocket pod, or storm bolter or frag storm grenade launcher, and it can also replace its auto launchers with two frag storm grenade launchers, and it can take an additional iron hail heavy stubber, which mine has there. Now I've gone for the most shooty, shooty version as possible. The next one I go for, because yes, as much of a pain as the grav plates were, um, I would really like to get another one. Uh, I think two of them in, in a Primaris Force would look pretty decent. And seeing as I'm probably gonna have about 50 Primaris Space Marines um, after all the releases, I think having two that can carry 20 of them would be quite good. So it's abilities. It's a hover tank, so distances and ranges are always measured to and from the model's hull, even though it's got a base. Repulse the field. Your opponent must subtract two from any charge rolls made for units that declare a charge against a repulser. That's going to brush them off a little bit, any units that have quite a short sort of charge distance, you've got to take two away. I think you'll find quite a few units falling short on charging this thing. Power of the Machine Spirit works differently in this edition. It doesn't suffer the penalty to hit rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons. And then if you keep the auto launchers, which I'd strongly recommend, instead of shooting any weapons in the shooting phase, the model can use its auto launchers. Until your next shooting phase, your opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls for ranged weapons that target this vehicle. That's a pretty much a must, because if you've got units that are being able to hit this thing on 2+, plus or 3+, plus, that extra uh, minus 1 to that roll is really going to help you out. From long range, like for, for me, for this, the way this is lo loaded out, I'm going to be whizzing this around the battlefield, and uh, I'll, be, I'll be deploying those auto launchers straight away, um, especially if I've got some aggressors or hell blasters in there. And finally, explodes. If the model's reduced to zero wounds, roll a dice before removing the model from the battlefield and before any embark models disembark. On a six, it explodes, and each unit within six inches suffers D6 mortal wounds. And finally, transport. Obviously, it can transport 10 Primaris infantry models, and each Mark 10 Gravis model uh, takes up the space of two other models, and it can't carry jump pack models. So, yes, you can carry, uh, you know, five aggressors in this, um, and that would be a very good... Uh, delivery method in my opinion because of their either close range um, flamestorm gauntlets or bolt storm gauntlets. So compared to a land raider it is cheaper than a land raider. Um, it's got the ability to carry primary space marines although that's not the reason you should be buying this kit at all. So even though it can't carry your mini marines for some reason and your terminators things like that it makes up a little bit with the same kind of stat line as the Land Raider, with its same toughness, its strength, its wounds, its moving even. Unfortunately, it fails on the, the save. A 2 plus save for this tank would have been better, and it should have been 2 plus, in my opinion. Um, and it also makes up for it a little bit with all of those weapons. There's a lot going on uh, with those weapons. It can put out so many shots. Let me compare it to a Land Raider Crusader. So a Land Raider Crusader has two, twin assault cannons, two hurricane bol bolters. Let's just give it a multi-melter. And there you go, that's it, pretty much. So, Land Raider Crusader, two hurricane bolters, that's 12 shots. Yes, it's got the rapid fire roll, but we'll just ignore that a little bit because that's, that's a situation specific modifier. So that's 12 shots. With the storm bolter, that's 14. With the twin assault cannon, that's 12. That's 26 shots. We'll give it a multi-melter. That's 27 shots. Compare it to the Repulsor in this configuration. We'll keep the Icarus uh, rocket pod on the back because although it's D3, you've got a chance of getting two nearly almost all the time. Um, 
so let's just call it two from from the storm bolter so we'll have one of those there and then these two will obviously replace those with the fragstorm grenade launchers so let's say a possible of six shots each will be generous then we've got the crackstorm grenade launchers uh, the iron hail we'll replace the auto launchers with the fragstorm just there and then we've got the two gatling and the heavy bolters so if we said that these were fragstorm Let's just say that they, they do get six shots each. I know I'm being really generous here. Um, so that's 12 shots plus the three. Let's just say it's got three. So 12, 15, 17, another 12, 29, another 12, 41, six, 47, three, 50, and another six, 56. I rest my case. <laughs> I mean, I'm being very, very generous there with the frag storm both getting six out of the D6 and the other frag storm getting D, D, um, another D6. Um, but just looking at the, the weapons that definitely have those shots, even if we had storm bolters here, yes, the firing arcs are a bit odd, um, so they might not be firing at one, one target, of course, but that's still two, four, six, 35 without including the frag storm, which is, yeah, it's it's an awful lot of DACA. It really is, and that this can pump out. And if you equip the frag storm launchers with your um, Laz Talon and your twin link Laz cannons, and then you keep the onslaught or you change it with an iron hail, you, you're still pumping out a lot of DACA for, yeah, I know. Yeah, unfortunately the save is three plus, it's not two plus, but the toughness is still the same as Land Raider, and so are the wounds, and so is the movement. Um, but you have a, an ability here to transport 10 Primaris Space Marines, uh, which have two wounds each. I know I shouldn't be using this as a, as a point, but that's the equivalent of 20 Space Marines in terms of wounds, in terms of bodies, things like that. So almost all of it is, is the same as, as the Land Raider. It's just that save, um, but it's, it's potential damage output. Um, it's higher, um, no doubt. And being critical, I just would have liked that two plus save, and I probably would have liked uh, a change in the movement, um, movement speed or something to do with the damage or um, something to do with the repulsor field, other than the subtract two for the charging, things like that. That's what I would have uh, liked. So in summary, I think it's a great tank. I don't think it's excellent. I don't think it's incredible. It, it's nowhere near as good as this little fella. Uh, but but I do think that it has a purpose. Um, if you just forget the transport capacity and it can only be carrying Primaris and things like that for one moment, look at it from a tank point of view. It's like another Land Raider, just cheaper points wise that is hasn't got as good armor but it's almost as survivable with those those wounds and it is stocked to the high hills with weaponry and guns and daca and i think it fits i do I, I think that it fits with the it might not fit with the primaris but it certainly fits with uh other space marine tanks and with uh, land raiders and, and predators and things like that but anyway what do you guys think about this tank that has snow skis on it Put it in the comments below it'd be great to hear your feedback thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the emperor protects